let's take some time to look at quiz four, the correct answers and some of the common problems that students had on this quiz. So the first part of the quiz asks, is the sentence a simple sentence, a compound sentence, or a complex sentence? And then it asks to add the correct commas. So there's a lot of things to keep in mind at the same time. Remember that a simple sentence is one independent clause. A compound sentence is two independent clauses joined by fanboys, so usually and, or, but, so, and yet. And then a complex sentence has a independent clause and a dependent clause. And that dependent clause starts with a subordinating conjunction, such as uh, while, as soon as, because, if, one from that list, right? So let's look at the first sentence. After the storm passed, the sun started to shine. After the storm passed, this is going to be a dependent clause. It starts with one of those subordinating conjunctions and then we have a subject and we have a verb. Remember even in a dependent clause you need to have a subject and a verb. Then we have our de independent clause second. So the rules of the complex sentence for commas is if you have your dependent clause first you have to add a comma. So you got a half a point for both of those things. In the next sentence, Central Park is having a festival of Asian art, music, and dance. I think everybody, oh, I forgot to put complex, sorry, let's put that up here. Uh, X for complex. Okay, I think everyone understood that this was a simple sentence but not everybody remembered to look for this list of three. So the festival was Asian art, music, and dance. So there's three things. So we need to add our comma here so that we can separate the items in our list of three. All right, sentence three. In the morning before class, you need to check the weather report. So in the morning before class, what is that? Is that a dependent clause? No, because remember a dependent clause needs a subject and a verb. So there's some words that you have to be careful of. Um, before, after, words like this, they could be a preposition. So you could say before class. That's a prepositional phrase. Preposition plus noun, right? Um, or you could have a dependent clause before class begins. So now you have a subject and a verb. So for something to be a dependent clause, it has to have a subject or a verb. Let's look at after. You could say, after we started uh, school. That would be a dependent clause, right? Because we have after plus a subject plus a verb. But after can also be a preposition. So after dinner, we went to a movie. So here's a whole sentence. After dinner, in this case, is not a dependent clause. This is a prepositional phrase. So we only have one dependent clause. We don't have any independent clause. That makes this a simple sentence. All right, so let's look back at number three. In the morning, prepositional phrase. Before class, prepositional phrase. 
where is our main clause right here? You need to check the weather report. So all we have right here is two prepositional phrases before a simple sentence. So I'm going to put S here for simple. And then remember the rule. If you have prepositional phrases before your subject, you put the comma before your subject. Some people put a comma in the middle here. No, you can put these together. Your comma goes before your subject. All right, next one. It was an important idea, yet no one was listening to him. When you see a fanboy, you have to check. Do I have a complete sentence on each side? So it was an important idea. Yep, that's a complete sentence. No one was listening to him. Yes, that's a complete sentence. So that means we have compound. With compound sentences, you always put the comma before the fanboy. Some people are still putting it after, so be careful with that easy mistake. All right, last one. My grandfather gave me some advice when I was applying to colleges. I see this word when, so let's check and see if I have a complex sentence here. My grandfather gave me some advice. What kind of clause? Independent or dependent? That's an independent clause. We have our subject, we have our verb. That could be a sentence by itself. Then with the when, do we have another clause here? Yes, we have when plus subject plus verb. So when I was applying to colleges. What kind of clause? Dependent, because it starts with one of these words, the subordinating conjunctions, right? So this is gonna be a complex sentence. And am I gonna put a comma here? What do you think? No, I hope you said no. We have our independent clause first, so there's no comma. All right. This was actually pretty bad, so I'm definitely going to give you some more work to practice that. Let's take a look at the second half. So the second half of the quiz you had to complete the sentences in ways that made sense. So you had to look at the conjunctions and use the meaning of that conjunction to make a sentence that makes sense here. And then also you had to make sure that you match verb tenses and that you used a comma where necessary, right? So because I hurt my neck. So here we have our dependent clause first. So I know I'm going to put a comma, and now I have to start with a subject and a verb. So because I hurt my neck, what makes sense? Um, so some kind of result. I hurt my neck, so what? But I can't write the word so. That's too many conjunctions, right? So because I hurt my neck, I couldn't go to work. Some people wrote right here something like, I, um, never mind. Okay, <laughs> this one was pretty good. So let's look at the next one. While we were in class yesterday. So while means at the same time. Some of your answers were strange because these two things couldn't happen at the same time. Like you said, the teacher was coming while we were in class yesterday. It doesn't really make sense. So what happened at the same time? Um, some people wrote, it was raining. So that could happen at the same time, right? It was raining and we were in class. Okay, notice that I didn't put a comma, why? because we have our independent clause first, so no comma. All right, next one. This was by far the
the worst one for everybody. So it made me realize that as soon as is not very clear for you. So you're making sentences with adverb clauses. So that means you can't say, we came as soon as possible. As soon as is a conjunction or a preposition, just like I had talked about with before or after. So you can say as soon as possible, but it won't be a complex sentence. You need as soon as plus subject and verb, okay? So if I say, we came as soon as you called. That means you called and then right away, very quickly after we came. So as soon as means something happened quickly after. So let's do some more examples. We came as soon as you called. Um, we could also say She left as soon as class finished. So class finished, and then soon after, very quickly after, she left. Let's do one more. So this would be at a restaurant. Sounds like you're in a hurry here. So it, we paid as soon as the bill came. So the bill came and right after we paid. Okay, so I hope that makes uh, as soon as a little bit more clear. All right. All right, let's come down here. Although we usually work in groups. So the word although means something has to be surprising or a little bit contradictory, a little different. So although we usually work in groups, this is a dependent clause, so I'm going to put the comma before my independent clause. So what could be a little surprising? Although we usually work in groups, I prefer to work alone. So you can see these two are different. Um, some people also wrote, although we usually work in groups, we don't talk at break. So that's a little surprising, right? You work with people in groups, but then you don't talk at break time. So with although, look for something different or surprising. Okay, and now with if. The biggest problem here was about um, using future. So if you don't come to my party. In an if clause, we, it, we don't say will. So if you don't come to my party is in the future. We don't know if you're going to come to my party or not. But after the word if, you won't see will, but the, the meaning is still future. So here, you need something in the future to match, like, I will be angry if you don't come to my party. You can't say I am angry because the word if, you don't know yet if they're coming or not. So it has to be future, okay? And what about comma? Do I put a comma here? The answer is, no, I have my main clause here. My independent clause comes first. My dependent clause starts with if, that's my second clause, so no comma. All right, I hope that helps you understand your quizzes a little bit better. Um, you can look in your grades now to see how you scored.